Hey folks, this is the Yaku Cosmopolitan. Let's do another MPB team preview for the 2023 season. Please keep in mind I am recording this before opening day, so if there are any injuries in the first few games of the season, I won't be able to take that into account. But anyway, the team we will be covering today are the Chibalote Marines, a very entertaining team to watch because they have one of the very best cheering sections in all of Japan. And they're finally able to sing again this year after three seasons of COVID restrictions. Now, they were fifth place in the Pacific League last season with a 69-73-1 record. Uh, only a few games under 500, but a pretty disappointing season overall. They had finished in second place in 2020 and 2021, so fans were hoping they could take that next step and maybe even win the pennant. But instead... They were never really in the running to make the playoffs all year. Their team way to runs graded plus was 89, dead last in the Pacific, and their team fielding independent pitching minus was 104, which was fifth in the Pacific. So overall, a really bad year on both sides of the ball. But they did make some moves this offseason to address some of the problems. First and foremost, they let Leonis Martin and Brandon Laird go to foreigners who were absolutely beloved by the fan base, but it was pretty clear that they were at the end of the road. They both raked in 2021, hit over 50 home runs combined, but 2022 was a total disaster. No offensive production whatsoever, so I think it was necessary to set those guys loose. Um, but unfortunately, unfortunately, they also had to say goodbye to any Romero, Tyron Guerrero, uh, and Roberto Osuna. Romero was a pretty mediocre starter. Uh, and then the latter two were high leverage relievers. Guerrero wasn't very consistent, but when he was when he was at his best, he was unhittable. And Osuna was, you know, just one of the best closers in Japan. Period. Uh, and it hurts even more that he went to a PL rival uh, in the SoftBank Hawks, even after initial reports seemed to, seemed to suggest that he was going to resign with Lotte. So they basically had to reconstruct their entire foreign core. Uh, and they did that by poaching outfielder Gregory Polanco and left-handed pitcher CeCe Mercedes from the Yomiuri Giants. Plus, they signed right-handers Luis Perdomo and Luis Felipe Castillo. Now, I would say Polanco is a clear upgrade over Martin at this point in time. You know, he hit 24 home runs in his debut season with the Giants last year. Basically around a league average hitter, slightly above league average. Um, doesn't have a high on base, doesn't play good defense, but I think he's fine as a full-time DH, especially, you know, in a hitter's park like Zozo Marine. Mercedes, I think, is quite underrated. Um, doesn't work very deep into games, but he has a career ERA in the low threes over five seasons with Yomi Uri. So I definitely see him as an upgrade over Romero. Um, then the other pitchers, you know, Perdomo and Castillo are solid pickups as well. Not quite on the level of Osuna and Guerrero in my opinion, but not bad by any means. Um, Perdomo can be a swingman, and Castillo can maybe even pitch uh, in the late innings. You know, they, they, but they made an even bigger addition uh, to the pen, and that was bringing back Hirokazu Sawamura, who spent two years with the Boston Red Sox. Not bad numbers, but the peripherals. Uh, just weren't great, so it seemed like he couldn't land a job in MLB. He's got plus stuff, and he's an experienced pitcher, so I love that they were able to sign him um, because it was, you know, his, his short stint with the Marines in 2020 that earned him that initial MLB contract uh, in the first place. So, you know, pretty good additions on the pitching side, I think, uh, and, and that just about covers their offseason. Uh, now let's move on to the rotation it's headlined by 21-year-old phenom Roki Sasaki, an absolutely historic pitcher on many fronts, throws harder than any Japanese pitcher in history with the exception of Otani, 17 straight perfect innings last year, um, and just some crazy strikeout numbers. So the only question is, uh, or questions I should say, if for Sasaki is whether or not he can actually stay healthy for an entire season uh, and when he's going to be posted to MLB. Because he had a few rough patches last summer, just kind of ran out of gas. And I really respect that the Marines have managed his workload well to this point, but he does need to get around 25 starts and throw over 170 innings if they want to fully maximize his value. Uh, and it seems like, you know, he will probably be posted after the 2026 season. So time is ticking. Um, the Marines need to build a winning team around him before then. And looking at the rest of the rotation, they have several veterans in Oyumu Ishikawa, Manabu Mima, Kota Futaki, 
Uh, I don't think these guys are, are particularly good, but they're fairly reliable. Uh, I mean, Ishikawa and Mima did have good years in 2022. It's just that they have pretty underwhelming stuff. Um, you know, they also have Southpaws uh, in Mercedes, who we talked about, and Kazuya Ojima, who's still very young and has the potential to grow. Um, but some of the guys that get me the most excited are actually Daiki Iwashita, who had an 055 ERA in a super small sample size last year, you know, plus stuff, even on Samurai Japan's designated pitcher pool. Um, big breakout candidate. And then the same goes for Atsuki Taneichi, another guy who was on Samurai Japan's designated pitcher pool and, and can really blossom into uh, a top of the rotation guy. So I like those guys for sure. Now the closer will be Naoya Masuda from 2019 to 2021. He was about as reliable as they get, always locking down that ninth inning, but he struggled for long periods of time last season uh, and obviously lost the closer job once uh, Osuna arrived. So Let's see if he can rebound here in his, in his age 33 season. Uh, then you got Taiki Tojo and Fumiya Ono, who were both studs last year. You know, especially Ono, he can run it up to the high 90s. But, uh, you know, we need to see if he can replicate that success in 2023 because the, Marine, the Marines have had problems the last few years finding year-to-year -year consistency with their relievers. You know, a guy like Ch Chihaya Sasaki is a prime example of this. 1.26 ERA in 2022, 6.39 uh, or, or 1.26 ERA in 2021 rather, and a 6.39 ERA in 2022. So I think their pen has some solid pieces. You know, I'm also a believer in uh, uh, Yuki Kuniyoshi, but you know they they aren't so good to where you necessarily feel confident about them uh, going into the year. Moving on to the position players, you know, Komatsukawa has a ton of potential behind the plate. Um, though he is very, very raw and exposed at this point. Only a teenager and he has a lot of work to do on both sides of the ball. He was the worst defensive catcher in the league by some metrics in his rookie season. Uh, they also have uh, Tamara and uh, Sato who can catch. Seiya Inoue is the first baseman. We haven't really seen him at his best since 2018, 2019-ish, particularly... Um, you know, partially due to injury, uh, partially just because he's getting old, but he is capable of hitting 20 plus home runs in a good year. Shogo Nakamura at the Keystone, I think, is probably their best overall player. His defensive metrics were actually quite bad last year, but he's typically a guy that does a little bit of everything, plays almost every day, has good defense, has some speed, has some power, and gets on base. So I'm, I've always been a fan of his game. Uh, he's an already Yasuda at third base, has a ton of upside. Same draft class as Murakami and Kiyomiya back in 2017. Defense has always been elite, pretty and pretty disciplined at the at the plate as well. Uh, the power and the power finally started to show up towards the end of the year, um, and and he won the cleanup spot towards the end of 2022. So, I think he can break out and hit 20 plus bombs. Um, but then again, I've been saying that for the last two years, and it hasn't quite worked out yet. So uh, we'll have to see it to believe it, I guess. Now, shortstop is actually a pretty gaping hole. They had Adani Hechevarria as a stopgap there for a couple of years. I didn't even, you know, mention him as one of the guys they lost this offseason because he was honestly, you know, a negative, negative value. Um, made some highlight real plays on defense every once in a while, but just could not hit whatsoever. So young Kenta Chatani seems to be like um, he might be the starting shortstop, uh, either him or, or Fujioka. Now, the outfield actually looks all right. Takashi Ogino is almost 40, but he's still getting he's still getting it done, getting better with age. All of his best seasons have come in the best in the last three or four years. Um, so you have to think that the age is going to eventually catch up to him, but um, he's still really, really good on both sides of the ball. Akito Takabe had a big coming out party last year, made the all-star team and led all of MPB in stolen bases with 44. A lot of people expect an even better 2023 from him. Personally, I'm a bit worried about his hitting because the underlying numbers don't suggest that he can really replicate the success, but, you know, I'd love to see if he can prove me wrong. Koki Yamaguchi led the team in homers last year with 16. Um, obviously, that's that's not very many, but uh, needs to be more patient, draw more walks, make more contact, but for a 22-year-old, he is certainly trending up and up, and I think he has 25 to 30 homer potential. Um, but based on his approach... He's also a guy that might struggle for extended periods of time. So hopefully we see the former and not not much of the latter. 
Uh, and then I'll also throw in uh, Kyoto Fujiwara's name because he's a prospect uh, that people have been high on for years. Just hasn't really done anything at the top level yet. Maybe this will finally be the year, though, that he, he puts it together. He definitely has the tools for it. Um, but yeah, that just about does it for the Marines preview. I think this is a team where if everything goes right, they can sneak into the playoffs. You know, if Sasaki stays healthy the entire year, the rest of the staff improves a little bit. And then Polanco, Nakamura, Yasuda, and Yamaguchi all have big years at the plate. That's not an impossible scenario by any means, but I would say it's not particularly likely. So I, I expect them to finish closer to the bottom. This is definitely a team that most people think are going to be fifth place or, or last place. But let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe for more MVP content in English.